That's a lot of nuts! Every woman in my life is telling me that they hate my long hair, but everybody in the YouTube comments says I look like the next Bollywood star. Somebody's lying to me, and I'm not sure who. Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, let me ask you something. What is a gamer? You know, like what is the definition? I consider myself a gamer. Is a gamer someone who uses the gamer word? I don't use the gamer word. So what makes a gamer? I figure we could dissect the games that defined me. This is an idea I stole from PewDiePie, who stole it from Trash Taste, who stole it from Twitter that took it from Tumblr. At the end of the day, they probably took it from me back like 10 years ago. Good luck fact checking that one. I think we all have a unique stance on the media that defined us as a generation, right? You could take a look at your favorite albums, you could take a look at your favorite movies, and I might do that in the future. But I think video games truly, when you take a look at the games that you would say defined you, you're probably looking at an interesting dissection of yourself as a personality. And as a YouTube YouTuber, what's more interesting than talking about myself? So this is a three by three. I've seen these on 4chan boards at, at least three or four years ago. Basically, you just make uh, a nine image collage, a three by three, three by three equals nine. This isn't a math class, but I know some of you can have difficulty with numbers, so there you go. And basically, it's just sort of like a, like a, like a mood board or something, except it's, you know, media. And I thought we could do one of these and uh, just sort of, you know, take a look at what we all played uh, as children. First up on my list of games from like my console era young teens before I did anything on the internet or even owned a computer at home has to be Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. A fantastic game. I'm going to do my best to not rave about these games for like 10 minutes each to keep this a nice concise video, but oh my god was this game fantastic. First of all, it was the first game I ever owned, one of the first games I ever played, and I played the hell out of this game because it was one of the only games that I had in the house. Um, but it was also one of the first games that I ever discovered speedrunning for. Like, I had seen people speedrun, like, Halo and Legend of Zelda, games that I had played and I could, like, appreciate it. But watching somebody take Yoshi's Island, a game that I had hundreds of hours in, and then speedrun it and, and play it with such proficiency, like, 20 years later to see, like, this much dedication and appreciation for a game that I played as a kid, I would not be the man I am today without... Yoshi's Island. If that was not the fundamental groundwork for me playing video games, a game that was built so well, had so much beautiful design and music and excellent platforming that people play it to death even 20 years later. I mean, I, I feel like it just set my bar for like good video games so freaking high at the tender age of like nine that we absolutely got to throw it on the board. Any of the Ratchet and Clank games could easily make this list, but Going Commando was the first Ratchet and Clank game that I played, so it's Ratchet and Clank 2. This game had so much like crude adult humor built into just hack and slash, use a thousand different guns and upgrade them in any way that you want to gameplay. Like it was perfect for a young Sumeto, but like the goofiness, the humor, the silly characters, the jokes in every single one of the cutscenes, like interlacing this kind of um, humor in action and video games really sort of opened up the medium for me. So I got to give a lot of credit to Ratchet and Clank just for like making me realize that games were more than just like push button, get high score. Ratchet and Clank 2 was titled Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. Ratchet and Clank 3 was titled Up Your Arsenal. Ratchet and Clank 5 was Size Matters. They also have Quest for Booty, A Crack in Time, Full Frontal Assault, like just hilarity worked into this action franchise and I appreciated every second of it. The last game that's on my list of games from like my retro era is Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. It's the third game of the franchise, but again, it's the first game that I played on the PS2. And this game, all oh, I just got lost in this game. There was so much. You start in Paris and you gotta wear costumes to sneak around the mob bosses and there's tar polluting the water and then you're in Australia and you gotta get Murray free from his guru and then you end up in like Holland and you're hacking computers and then you're in China and you gotta recruit the Panda King from like the first two games. Like, oh my God, you really feel like a thief. You really feel like you're pulling off this big grand heist. And I could not believe the number of mini games, different worlds, 
different enemies, voice acting, cutscenes that were in this. I could not believe how much was in this game. The current speedrun for Sly 3 is like seven hours long. I have absolutely no problem sitting down and just playing this game for seven hours straight. I've got no issue playing this thing front to back. It is worth it. Even now, having beat it like a thousand times, still worth it. I feel like I need one more retro because there's only two like mid-tier PC games I got to mention in the next row, but Katamari Damacy, oh, I loved this game. I had this on the PSP. I had We Heart Katamari and Katamari Damacy, and I would play this thing for hours, bro. It's like the opposite of what Sly 3 was for me, where Sly 3 was great story, seven hour campaign, all this voice acting and stuff. Katamari Damacy was just simplicity. You're rolling a ball to some futuristic Japanese jazz fusion music, and it's just so incredibly addicting. I have this on Steam. I play this all the time now, because it's just that fun of an experience to just roll up little apples until you're big enough to start rolling up skyscrapers. It's so satisfying. And as weird as it is to say that this like was a defining moment for me, like to understand like such simple gameplay and music can make such a great experience is just mwah, chef's kiss. Samed, how come you're ranking games on this channel? Don't you already do games on your Some Ordinary Gamers channel? Shut up, I hate you guys. All right, the first of the two games that I played in my early PC days, and this is probably a surprise to nobody if you've been watching me for long enough, is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and I fell in love with this thing, man. We played this all the time. I got into trading skins and unboxing stuff, and as a result, because you could gamble the skins on professional matches, I was watching professional Counter-Strike matches all the time and i mean like my freshman year of college like i wasn't paying attention to a single class because i had like four hundred dollars in skins riding on ninjas in pajamas beating cloud nine in the finals of a game and through watching so much professional counter-strike i became pretty good at competitive counter-strike and so me and my friends like this this is not just us getting together and playing a game on discord you know what i mean like we were try harding we were practicing smokes we had different phrases for what play we were about to execute like this is to this day probably the only competitive game that i've ever taken that seriously um and i've got like 1500 hours in this game got to global elite played on basically the highest level, but then once hackers became more of an issue and I sort of realized that I was never going to be good enough to go pro, I, I haven't picked up this game in quite a few years now. I will say that Counter-Strike is definitely sort of like tainted my taste for competitive shooters. Counter-Strike is inherently a very uh, like fair game. There isn't a lot of uh, like different heroes and abilities and stuff. It's very much a precision shooter. Um, and because that's sort of where I got my bearings in FPS, I can't really appreciate stuff like Valorant or Overwatch where there's so much flashiness and abilities going around that actually aiming for someone's head and getting the headshot and focusing on your shooting becomes secondary is, you know, not, nothing really hits like Counter-Strike hits. Okay, so take everything that I just said about Counter-Strike in that I was pretty good at it, we took it seriously, and it was an enjoyable game, uh, and just give yourself the opposite of that. <laughs> And then you have League of Legends, which has sucked up even more of my life. It is very much not fun to play if you're not very, very good at it. A lot of people have talked about the decline of this game and the fact that if you just jump into a casual match in League of Legends and try to take it seriously, you're not going to have fun. Like, you need to be exceptionally good at League of Legends to be able to play a game at a level that you're actually going to have any control over the other four members on your team. And it's it's just not a great multiplayer experience if you're learning how to play. But that being said, if you understand how it works and you want to watch the top players in the world play the game the way that it's meant to be played, oh, it is it is some of the best stuff you can watch in terms of video game gameplay. Is League of Legends a fun game to play? No. No, it absolutely is not. But if you take the time to really learn the nuances of the game and start to really play it the way that it's meant to be played, does it feel like a good use of your time? Also, no. All right, last three games. These are all games from the modern era. This is after being a Twitch streamer, after being a YouTuber. And these are all games that are like half game, half art. I found that these are the games that really make an impact on me now. And the first one is Catherine Classic. There's a remake called Catherine Full Body, but this game is just so incredibly gorgeous. The gameplay is just this. It's just 
puzzle blocks. You got to climb to the top, but the story is so intense. You play as Vincent. He has a girlfriend, Catherine. He meets a succubus, also named Catherine, and you make these decisions about like which girl you stay with, and that impacts what ending you get, and all of these sequences are in Vincent's dream where he's having nightmares because he thinks he's cheating on Catherine and she might be pregnant and there's all this psychological stuff going on and in a game that is just moving blocks and trying to get to the top of a tower you have all this emotion that comes along with the story that just makes it all it's it feels like more than a game and I it, it is just a game but like you feel for the character. You feel every death feels incredible. You you feel the whole, hey, if you die in the dream, you're not going to find out what happens later in the story. The cutscenes are basically like watching an anime. There's like a full-fledged, you know, universe going on outside of this thing. And I'm sure there's plenty of games that do this great. But this is the first game that I played that was like, oh, there is so much going on here that I'm just not used to. After 3,000 hours of Counter-Strike and League of Legends, suddenly you get this masterpiece and... Yeah, this made an impact on me. Obviously, the retro games don't age super well. You should play them if you want to play some retro stuff. I would say Katamari Damacy anybody would enjoy. But if you're going to play one game off of this list, because um, the next two are pretty long, you should absolutely play. Catherine Classic is available on Steam. Catherine Full Body, the remake, is available on the Nintendo Switch. And if you like anime in any regard, or if you're just sort of interested in a game that's a little bit more than just puzzles and has some story to it, I don't think there's anything I could recommend more. Yakuza. Oh, I can't say enough about Yakuza. Everything that I said about Ratchet and Clank in that it's like a like an action game with some comedy elements to it, Yakuza perfects on that formula. The storyline is magnificent. It's got this big, grandiose, anime-esque thriller storyline with twists and turns and characters and betrayal and yakuza and government and police all the power struggles between them and then at the same time it's got these side missions that are just the goofiest shit in the world the goofiest shit possible it's like it was made by a completely different writing team it almost feels like it doesn't belong in this action beat-em-up game because they're ridiculous you got to help someone on their first date you got to get three strikes in bowling to win a turkey and then they give you a live turkey but then you can use the turkey as your manager in the real estate minigame like it's ridiculous if you haven't played yakuza if my PC could stop shitting itself. If you haven't played Yakuza, every one of them are available on Steam. They're all available on the Xbox Game Pass. I'm sure you've heard about Yakuza Like a Dragon that came out early this year or last year, but there's seven games in the franchise. Some are better than others, but they are all equally intense in the storyline and stupid in the side missions. They are me in a video game through and through. I love this franchise. You, John. Last but certainly not least, honestly might be my favorite game of all time, is Persona 4 Golden. You have to be into JRPGs, so you gotta really play stuff like, you know, Pokemon or Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts to be into a game like this. But if you're into it, oh my god, this game, the storyline in this game, this is the game that truly made me appreciate video games as a medium for art. Oh my God. The gameplay is just standard JRPG. Just think of it like Pokemon. You're using personas like Pokemon. You got weaknesses, you got strengths, but the gameplay is whatever, right? The, the absolute heart chilling parts of Persona are the characters, the people you meet, the trauma that they have, that they have to work through, the team you put together, the things you learn about the people in the small town of Inaba. I haven't played Persona 5. I haven't played Persona 3. I'm sure I will as time goes on, but there is a reason that people do not shut up about Persona, and it is these games are art. I listen to the soundtrack unironically throughout my day. I think about the combat in my fucking sleep. The characters that are in this game, the game, the world that they build in this shit, dude. Is it worth the hundred hours that I put into the game? Can I just recommend that to anybody and say it'll be worth it? Absolutely not. There is definitely a specific type of person that is going to enjoy this game, but bruh, I am not exaggerating when I say that Persona 4 Golden made me cry. Like, it is that good. It takes a certain type of person to appreciate what makes Persona as good as it is, I think. But at the end of the day, like, 
you know, my favorite movie is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. My favorite anime is Evangelion. I preferred Kanye West's album over Drake's album. I'm the sort of person who appreciates attention to detail and subtlety, and Persona just embodies that so beautifully. So this is my 3x3. Three three. These are the games that defined me uh, as a memer, and I want to see yours. I want, you guys don't need to make it elaborate like this, but if you do send it to me on Twitter, I will check all of them out. But if you just want to list some of your favorite games down in the comments, like, you know, give me a, give me a short list of stuff that, not just like your favorite thing to play, but stuff that you really feel like incorporated itself into your personality. I would like to have a long list of the games that made an impact on people's lives so that I can play them as a professional Twitch streamer, but then so also that, you know, I have an idea as a future game developer when I end up writing storylines for video games and stuff in my 40s, um, that I have an idea for the, the sorts of things that people appreciate and the stories that really impact people in a way that will change their life. That's what I aim to do here on the channel with my YouTube videos, and that's what I aim to do with every project that I touch going forward. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you didn't, I don't give a shit. It's my YouTube channel, but thank you for making it to the end. Yeah, what what games do you like? Send 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 me your favorites down in the comments. I'm, I'm very excited to see if we have some similarities or if there are some hidden gems in the world that I have yet to play as a kid, but I promise we'll make an effort to play as an adult. And I hope you guys uh, play some of this stuff and let me know what you think of the games that defined me as a person. I'll catch you on the next episode. Spisu.